Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm back again for day number four and that is the last day of the craft show, the online craft show. Just bear with me while I bring it up on my computer. So that, oh God, I can hear myself, hang on. Mute, where's my mute button? Oh gosh, I'm doing well this morning. Okay, good morning, Michelle, Joanne, Nari, everybody. Just bear with me while I put my gloves on because I'm going to make a happy mess this morning. Um, as yeah, so as part of the Great International Craft Show, I keep saying Great Australian Craft Show. I guess it's because I'm here, and you know, international is those lovely girls over the ditch. Love you guys in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, I thought I would have a bit of a play today because we've got alcohol inks on special. So theoretically, I'm organised. So fingers crossed that I get everything done here. Let me just turn on some light. And is everything straight? My phone's not straight. That's a bit better. Okay. So let's crack into it. So I am... I love alcohol inks. Everyone knows how much I love alcohol inks. They're super duper fun. Really, really easy to use. You need minimal supplies to make something really, really awesome. And that's important. So here's a couple of little cards that we've done in previous live Facebooks using the Scrap Effects silhouettes and alcohol ink backgrounds. Uh, and I have created this little number here using a you know a little bit more mixed media style where I've stamped an image for my art journal on a background using alcohol inks. So alcohol inks, there's a huge range of colors. Um, there's some new colors that have just come out as well. And they are these fabulous little bottles of um, ink in an alcohol solution. So what happens is the alcohol solution allows the ink to move around. We do need to use a particular paper when we are doing this. We do need to work with uh, a UPO paper, an alcohol ink paper, which is a synthetic paper. And that's really important because we don't want it to just soak, we don't want the liquid to soak in, and we want to create something that's really easy and effective. You can use a gloss cardstock, and I will be using a gloss cardstock today as well to show you, um, which I don't have any in the shop at the moment, but I do have some in my personal stash that I'll demo with. Um, the reason I've got gloves on is because I've still got, you know, two more live Facebooks to do today, and I'm going out for dinner this evening, so I really don't want my hands completely covered in ink because I am usually pretty messy. A couple of things as well that I have handy. I've got a bit of a clean space here on to my left where I put the um, alcohol inks, uh, the, the pieces of artwork to dry. And I also have a heat tool to blow around some uh, air and help the drying process. And I have an air puffery, puffery thing. So this is a old Tim Holtz one, which I've had forever. Uh, you can also get the uh, Couture Creations one, which is available online. The other cool thing that you're going to, that will certainly help you along with the process is this special solution, this alcohol blending solution. And this is going to help the ink flow around your page. So I'm going to make a bit of a start here because they do take a little bit of time to dry. So I am going to try and make a few different ones here. Um, as you can see, I'm a lot more organized than I normally am. I've cracked out this desk caddy for that's made especially for alcohol inks and I've just put it at 15% off and you'll find it under alcohol inks and you'll find it under tools. 
Um, but I am notoriously messy when it comes to alcohol ink. So I have found it's easy to take the lids off straight away uh, to save time. And then these aren't all gonna fall over on my desk. Um, I've probably got double this amount of alcohol inks. So I've just picked out a few colors to use. Um, the question has just been asked, do they have a smell? Yes, they do. They are definitely fragrant. There is no, no fear of that at all. They definitely are fragrant. So I would recommend staying away from them if you have an allergy to strong smells or react with strong smells. So I'm going to use the brand new colours. We've got the Golden Age. I've got Burnt Sienna and Sunflower, and I'm going to have a play with those. So these are glitter, so I do need to make sure that I give them a, a good shake before I use them to get that glitter moving around. If I had had, it, do they have a strong smell? Yes. If I had had, you know, overindulged in alcohol last night, having a few of, uh, having a play with these this morning might send me over the limit, I reckon. Uh, the smell of these can be quite strong. All right. So I'm just splattering this one on and I put down that blending solution first to help move it around. And I don't know if you can see that glitter is amazing. So now I'm going to hit it with my heat tool. To move that color around, you don't have to hit it with the heat tool. Um, you can let it air dry and I'm just going to add some burgundy ink to it as well now and get that moving on there and I'm mixing the two glittery ones together. So I do like the alcohol blending solution. I find that it gives a really, really lovely finish to the card. Um, And it does actually react differently than, say, isopropyl alcohol. Um, these are so glittery. Holy moly. So these are the new Golden Age. And I'm just going to pop that aside to dry now and I can't pick it up with my rubber gloves. What brand of inks I am using? I am using Couture Creations inks. That is an Australian company that have bought out these inks. So that is the brand that uh, is easiest to get hold of in Australia. Due to shipping, they can be harder to um, to get our hands on. So we do. I do like to use the Australian brand and um, yeah, so I'm just reading the um, reading the comments as I go here. I'm going to do some fluoros now. So I'm going to get a nice wash of the blending solution down. And then I'm going in here with a generous amount of fluorescent blue. Go for the purple. I will go for the purple this morning, Deb. Because I do love the way that the fluorescent purple looks. On this oh, my sleeves are falling down so then I'm just going to use my little air puffer to move that around and the um, that the fluoro ones actually dry with a little bit of a matte finish so moving that around and I'm just gonna pop that one aside to dry as well. So I'm creating these really quick and easy little backgrounds. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some cards and do some die cutting. So Vicky's just commented saying, depending on where you are, you could place a fan behind and blow the air around. So yeah, you can certainly do lots of different things to help with the, um, with the airflow. Now I'm going to get a bit of a drippy effect on this one 
and I'm going to push it around with my puffer, my puffer, my air puffery thingy. And I'm just using a combination of a couple of different greens here because I know that I want to cut out some Christmas trees. Oh, I like that. They do only take a few minutes to dry because what happens is the, um, the alcohol evaporates, leaving the ink on the Yupo paper. So the synthetic paper allows that ink to move around. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to make sure that it is completely dry before we do die cutting. And I will show you in a minute my little trick when I get to that bit in a second. My little trick to show you how to, um, to die cut with this. So now I'm going to use one of the Cobalt Glitter Accents. And I'm going to pop that in with some amethyst. And I'm going to use my heat gun to mix those two together. So if you're using a heat gun, you need to make sure that you keep it moving. You do not, you do not want to keep it uh, in one area too long because it is a synthetic plastic based paper you might melt the paper and that's not ideal Mr. bit so there's some really amazing there's some really amazing things that you can do with alcohol inks um there's all these fancy tricks and things that you can do and if you jumped on instagram or youtube you'd find all of these really cool things i am a super simple person i gen i just like to keep it nice and basic and what i like to do is just create these really lovely mixed up backgrounds and then go in and um die cut and and stamp and color over the top so I'm now going to do a one here without any of the blending solution in the background. And I'm just going to splatter my colour on. So I've got a couple of different oranges here. I've got the yellow and I'm going to go back in with the pink. I'm not going to add the purple because what happens if I add the purple is going to make a really muddy colour. And I don't want to muddy it up too much. I want to have those colours blending in beautifully together. And you can see what the tool does here. It pushes the air around and then gives, the, um, gives some direction to my ink. And I can add a bit more. So there's plenty of different ways, but let's, you know, if you keep it simple, then I find that the effects can work out beautifully and I've made an excellent mess with that. Some of the other you, um, live Facebooks I've done, you know that I've had a bit of a play with um, stencils with them as well and I absolutely love doing that. This is gloss cardstock, not Yupo paper, okay? This one will dry a little bit differently. So I'm going to put my cards, uh, put my blending solution down and I've got a fluorescent purple and I'm mixing it with just plain geranium like that and I'm just going to roll that around and I love that effect. And I'm just going to cover my edges and just sit that aside to dry. So it does actually react just a little differently. So I thought I will show you on there. What else can I make? Metallic. Let's play with some metallic. So I've got metallic jade and I've got... Let's just put do a plain. No. Can I do a plain? Oh, alcohol ink pearl alcohol ink metallic alloy let's give that a go
So, yeah, I don't like to, to go all fancy, fancy all the time. I'm a pretty plain sort of person. I like to appreciate the the colour that comes out here as it is. Oh, look, I've got a splotch on that one. Let's flip it over. So, um, you can go, like I said, you can go super fancy. Just emptied that bottle. Let's open up another one. But for me, this is what works. Oh, and I'm being quite generous there with my blending solution. All right. So this time, so this, that was metallic, metallic jade with smolder, which is like a, a, a pearl, a pearl gray. And this, this metallic jade is absolutely gorgeous for Christmas cards and it'll be beautiful for a, tr um, for a tree. Oh, so pretty. I will be doing a Christmas card in a moment. I'm just reading some comments there. All right, I'm going to pop that one aside. That's verging on being my new favourite. Very wet. I don't quite know what I was thinking there. And I'll do another one with a gloss cardstock background. But this time I'm going to go with Twilight, which is a like a, a deep, deep blue with bubblegum pink, which is a pearl. Shake, shake, shake. And I'm not going to put down any blending solution first. I'm just going to crack into it. So because it is on a different surface, it will dry quicker. Wow. Nearly lost my pink. I was a bit too a bit too full on with that blue. But I love creating these little backgrounds and then what I do with them is turn them into card fronts, turn them into thank you notes that I send out to, to my customers. Did you see that? Um, and, and use them for lots and lots and lots of different purposes, okay? So now I'm going to hit that with the heat gun. And what the heat gun does it, is it creates these little puddles, these little lines. Not only speeds up the process, but it creates these lines along here. And that's what I love. Good morning, Carrie Ann. I'm just going to do a couple more just because I can. So let's go a little bit. Um, what else have I got here? Let's just go for the plain glitters. Oh, actually, you know what I have got? I have got a baby blue in the golden age. So the new golden age set. Um, there's not many of those left. You guys were quick this morning. And can we just take a moment because this glitter is amazing and I'm being super generous, but I'm going to bring it up to camera without spilling it so you can see the chunks of glitter in there. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. So I'm going to put that down. And I'm going to drop in some, what am I going to drop in? Another blue, maybe a little green, shamrock. 
Alright, here we go. All right, this is coming up beautiful. There's, like I said before, there's lots of tips and tricks and things you can do, but this is what I like to do. I'm a, I'm a super basic person when it comes to alcohol inks. I like to appreciate what's here rather than overcomplicating it. It's unnecessary to um, to do all of this extra bits and pieces to it. I let the ink really speak for itself, uh, and I really enjoy that process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a moment to dry all of these off so that I can start making some quick and easy little cards and things with them. Um, so alcohol inks you can colour metals with as well. So if you have some metal embellishments like some cogs, for example... You could quite easily, oh, look at that, the boss is here. Not me, like my landlord boss. <laughs> right, yeah, you could colour um, lots of bits and pieces with it, such as, such as, yeah, like metal cogs and embellishments for pages just look amazing. You can give them some real depth. So this is the one that I did on, oh no, that's on UFO. And this is the alcohol ink with the fluorescent. And I don't know if you can see, but it's got that real nice chalky background. Really, really pretty. Melting my rubber gloves. Oops, and then I just dropped my mouse in it. Oh, there we go. Working in white rubber gloves is not my favourite thing to do. Yeah, you can foil over the top of these as well because it becomes a little bit sticky and tacky. The foil will stick to it. Um, I don't have any foil here at the moment to be able to show you how to do that. This is the golden one and I don't know if you can see that beautiful glitter that's coming up. So pretty. But where it's, um, where it's a little bit sticky, that's where the foil would stick to it. Makes it a really, really interesting finish. And just, um, there's a couple here that I'm just not going to lift up because they're still quite wet. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra heat to them. There we go. And drop one on the floor. Okay. Put those back in my little stand. That goes in the bin. All right. Oh, so pretty. Why is that one not dry? 
I was very heavy-handed this morning with my ink. Um, Vicky's just commented, I could watch the organic nature of how these move all day long. And you know what? So could I. That's exactly what I love to do with these. Um, keeping it really, really basic. Because I'm a basic sort of girl. All right. Wipe this up a little. How do you get, somebody asked me the other day, how do you get it off your hands and off your workspace? I've just got some hand seno and I'm just going to clean up my workspace. And I have got one of these awesome uh, mats here just to protect my area that I'm working on. Take those babies off. Whew. Okay. So let's see what I have got here. I have got a couple of different things that I want to add to my backgrounds. Um, oh, this one is still wet. Maybe I was a little bit heavy handed with it. Let's just speed that up using my air puff, puffer, puffer, air puffer. That's probably the politi politically correct way of saying it, isn't it? So how was everybody's Saturday night? Oh, everybody's having a conversation here without me. Oh, okay. Right, so a couple of questions have been asked. How do you get the gold lines through it? It's just about using different applications. So if you have a fine line applicator, something like something like one of these bottles, for example, you can put the gold alcohol ink in it and do the lines all the way across. Um, I don't have one open, but that is what I do. So that's where it's handy to purchase a, a fine line applicator to get that, that look. That is, the I think, the best way of doing it. I do not like to mix things in with it, bring in other bits and pieces. Um, I think that, like other mediums, I think that it, things can get a little bit messy. So I, I tend to kind of not make a, a big reaction, big chemical reaction by adding in other pigments. But that's me personally. Um, like I said, I'm certainly no expert with alcohol inks and I do things on a crafter's level, not on a professional, going to sell it to the public sort of thing. So everyone does it differently. Right. What have I got here? I have got some die cuts and I have got some chipboard. Let, let's start with these. So we, I've got some of these Scrap Effects big leaves. And these are my favourite embellishments. I've used these in an art journal class. Uh, and what I love about these is that... You can layer them over the top and create a quick and easy card. So I would cut out, put it on an angle like that and cut out my leaf to be the size and glue that down onto there. All right, then I have got this gorgeous gorgeous card all right so to, to glue that on I would go with a, a fine tip glue or a glossy accents or something like that so that will work I will just do that in a moment off camera with that one and then I've got the little baby leaf like seriously that this is one that I just did earlier just so that I'd have it dry for you um, so that is great I'm just reading some of the comments at the same time. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not going to get into the details on how to how to do all of those bits and pieces today. We're just doing this for for fun. Um, okay, so that's that one there. That's a great little leaf um, embellishment as well. Um, scrap effects have got these things. So this one is the is the ballerina. I mean, how amazing does that look just by itself? I know you can just see, I didn't want to take it out of the plastic, but that would make an amazing, beautiful little girl's card. Uh, we have got um, the compass. So there's some really great things that you can do with that. 
Oh, now I've got ink on it. Going well. If you buy that one today, you'll get the free alcohol ink to it, stuck to it. Okay, chipboard. I can colour chipboard with alcohol inks as well. So if you are colouring chipboard with alcohol inks, a couple of things that you need to remember. It will soak right in and it will probably go quite dark to start with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bronze. I'm going to do it with a metallic. So I'm just giving it a good shake. And now I'm just going to drop that over the top. So what's actually happening? Ho, ho, ho. What's actually happening is the alcohol is soaking straight in and leaving that metallic pigment sitting on top of the chipboard. So there's one there. And now I'm gonna do this one in the green. I'm not squeezing it, I'm just allowing it to come out of the bottle. And I'll bring it up to camera in a minute to show you. But especially the metallics and even the glitters will look amazing. Amazing. Where's that blue metallic that I had? Glitter. Maybe I didn't have. Cinnamon. Let's use cinnamon. So the cinnamon is like a, um, oh, well, that's exactly what it is, it's cinnamon. Just a bit there. And now I haven't, 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 haven't done, um, I might try the pearl smolder, which is the pearl silver sort of pearl over the top. Now I'm just going to give that a really good shake. Yeah, see that's coming up nice. Just so don't forget Christmas. All Christmas things are fifteen percent off until I go to bed tonight. Okay, so we've got fifteen percent off and alcohol inks are 15% off. And this lovely little stand that I'm using here will be 15% off, because I just popped that on special today. Is that showing up? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now, that can then look amazing on top of that for a Christmas card, on a scrapbook layout, on anything like that. So there's no reason why I can't do that. No reason at all why I can't do that. You know what I haven't tried? I have not tried the fluoros on chipboard. Let's do that. Hot pink fluoro. Oh, I hate, I can't even, I, I dislike spiders that much. I am ridiculously arachnophobic. But let's just do this. I can't even, that just freaks me out way too much. Now, the fluoros do have a slightly different makeup to them. So you do have to give them a really good shake and it's got a different pigment that sits on the top. So it does look very cool, but that's also gonna work. Let's try the glitter. Oh, I'm on a roll. Burnt Sienna. Shake, shake, shake. Oh. It's just, it's just poured glitter all over the top of that chipboard because it's got a real glittery accent to it. All right, I'll come back to that once it's dried. 
Um, die cuts. So die cuts are great. Actually, before I die cut, I'll stamp because that's super easy. Um, I'm going to just use my stamp, my stamp, and I'm going to use Distress, uh, Distress Black Archival Ink in Black Soot. And I'll do it over this one. Change my mind, do it over this one. So I like to make sure, um, no, Alison. Um, I like to make sure that I give this a really, really good ink. And nine times out of ten, I will do this on my stamp press so that I have got um, the ability to be able to go back and fix it if I have messed up my stamping. Now, I'm working on an uneven surface here. I didn't even think of that. It might not stamp perfect the first time, but let's give it a go. But that's come up looking pretty good. So I will let that dry 150% before touching it. Um, just grabbing another stamp. My words. I don't know where the rest of my stamps are. There you go. Quick little thank you card to go in with one of my orders. And then this one is my reads. And I think this one is from my All We All Make Choices collection. I am a simple girl. I like things stamped in black, and this is using the Black Soot Archival Ink over the top of alcohol inks. So that is my go-to every single time. I'm gonna pop that over there to dry. And there you go, so that's those two. Let's talk die cutting now. So die cutting is um, very effective. And I'm just making a bit of a clean spot here. And I'm, I'm really blown away about how good that looks. Woo -hoo -hoo. Happy days. Um, so die cutting is awesome. So die cutting, I use a Gemini machine. <sighs> Bonk, there it is. Um, and I, when I die cut alcohol ink, I like to use some baking paper. Uh, what have I got here? Let's use this one. This is a paper rose. Merry Christmas, everyone. I haven't used this one before. I've got no idea how this is going to go. Uh, hey, Nat, does it actually dry right off the alcohol inks? Will it stay on a bit tacky? What's that? The stamping. Um, the stamping, I um, I will heat set that and it, should, and it will be nice and secure. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I've got my Gemini machine. I have got the green cutting mats taped to them. And I'm gonna put this smack bang in the middle of this one. Like that. But before I do that, I'm going to put down the baking paper. So I just like to use the baking paper just in case it's not totally dry. Oh. Straight through. So the Gemini is the electronic, Gemini Junior is the electronic cutting machine. Noisy little sucker, but there's no handle winding. And then I can poke out my words and I 
back it on a piece of, I don't know, black cardstock or something. Um, come on. I'm just being super gentle so that I don't rip it. Come on. But this is gorgeous. Now, the reason it didn't cut absolutely and just pop right out is because the Yupo paper, as we know, is that synthetic paper. So I'm gonna come back to that because you have zero interest in watching me very patiently poke those out. I need to give it a little bit more love. But yeah, I do like using the baking paper with it. So I'm just gonna grab that. What else have I got here? I have got the winter tree. So this one we can do a couple of different die cuts with. Gently take it off the packet. And don't forget, something that not many people of you may be aware, after I do a live Facebook, you most of the things that I use in a live Facebook will go into will go into the pre-loved section. Used once, discounted and pre-loved. Just because I don't need to have everything open, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I like to make sure that, um, you know, I demonstrate with them, but I can't have all of this stuff open my own. I have these for my own personal stash, so they go into the pre-love section. So you can pick up a bargain. Now, Julie's just asked the question. Yeah, but you have to be quick, you're right. So I can use that number one, there we go. Um, did you say that my Gemini plates are stuck together? Yeah, what it is, is the lovely, incredibly talented Jennifer Maguire did a, um, a live Facebook a little while, oh, sorry, live Facebook. She did a, a YouTube a little while ago and showing how to save your plates. So these are the green plates that go with the Gemini Junior and these are... I have taped them to my clear tape. This, uh, sorry, my clear plates. This is how she did it and it prevents your plates from bowing. So if you have a look in the tool section on the website, you'll find these green plates. But if you look at Jennifer, if you look up Jennifer Maguire on YouTube, she is the goddess of all things crafting in America, of course. But she will do a, she's got a great demo on how to stop your plates, how to prevent your plates from bowing and how to un, or how to straighten them out a bit. So, come on. So yes, I do have my tapes, my plates taped together. Okay, again, because this is a super intricate plastic paper and intricate die, dun, dun, dun. what's the time? Quarter past eleven here in Adelaide. Alright. Come on, you wretched little thing. There we go. Oh, missed a bit. Oh, I like that. So I could have done that in two different greens. I could have done my background with a fluorescent green. I could have done my background with a, whoa, put your glasses on, that's a bit bright. So yeah, lots and lots of options there for you. 
you can um, that original cut out you can use that pop some little baubles on there do lots of really really cool things so the other one that I was going to demonstrate today but I'm not going to is this little squiggly whoops the little squiggly tree from paper rose as well so this is actually one of my designs from when I was working there some years ago um, but yeah that does as you can see like a double layer like that tree that I just did so some really really easy easy designs that you can do with your alcohol ink paper um, the stamping see that's that's dried up beautifully on that that's come up really really nice love that all right so i am not going to talk too much more about alcohol inks there's some really really great things that you can do um, and you are only limited by your imagination so like we said we've got these chipboard die cuts that you know chipboard cuts that you could put on um, you can make great great cards with them um this one here is currently my favorite so i could put some oh i know what i could do what happened to i had extra i had extra baubles from yesterday here we go extra baubles so from yesterday's live facebook We've got a couple of baubles left over from the Minte sheets. And I'm going to use this image of the fat man. And the fat man can sit on top of that. I love that. The fat man can sit up on top of that so you can custom make your christmas decorations to suit so yesterday i did embossing ink i did embossing powder i did magicals um but yeah there you go that looks pretty great okay so i am going to clean up my mess here um so just to recap what we've been doing is playing with alcohol inks um, and stamps and stencils, sorry, not stencils, stamps, dies, and die cuts. Um, I'm going to get this one out because this is bugging me because it's just needing a little bit of extra love. So I'll do this while I'm chatting to you. Um, so you can jump online and... Uh, to nataliemay.com.au and make the most of the 15% off of your alcohol inks, 15% off of Lindy's products today, 15% off of all things Christmas. And if you are interested, we have also got 15% off of washi tape because you all need more washi tape. Um, we have got 15% off of the Dina Wakeley... Um, collage paper as well which i'm going to be using in a live facebook a little bit later today uh and i'm going to do some lindy's in my next one my next um live facebook so there's going to be plenty of, of bargains there for you everything christmas is still 15 percent off so you will get plenty of um christmas ideas and you can start making those christmas cards now uh, there's all sorts of really cool stuff. Don't forget, you will also go, if you order today, go in the drawer to win a, uh, to be a lucky prize. Um, a lucky prize to go in with your order. So, um, you will definitely, um, go in with a chance for that. And I won't be announcing tomorrow's, uh, today's winner tomorrow i'm just going to add it in with an order so it'll be a surprise for everyone uh there are plenty of classes available online um and i just i'm just being gentle with this because i don't want to tear it 
Um, so yes, there's there's plenty of options there for everyone. And until the end of September, don't forget you can sign up to my early bird price uh, for my art journal basics to learn a little about art journaling, the tools that you need, the basics, how to build a page, all of that sort of stuff. So I will be doing that very shortly. There's a show specials tab on the website. Make sure you check that out. So then that way you will see all the things that we have on special. We've marked down a heap of product, which are one-offs left. And um, there's some great show bundles available where things come in at about like a bundle's like 30% off. Good opportunity for you to stock up on some paint brushes and some palettes and pick up a bit of a bargain there. Oh, I've nearly got this. Nearly got it. Right, now we go. Um, and yeah, so there's plenty of plenty of options there for you to do that. Okay, so there we go. And then I could add that one to another project. Like that. Um, the question has just been asked. Um, uh, any particular adhesive? For sticking it down um, I use double-sided tape mostly um, I use express it double-sided tape that is the only only double-sided tape that you will find me using because it is a very good quality tape and not from a cheap shop um, and I use the magic glue which is the puzzle glue or, or dimensional magic for sticking down Yupo paper so there you go um, Julie, send me an email, please. Um, and I will chat to you all soon. I'm going to get off here now. Jump online, nataliemay.com.au. Wash your hands. Kiss your kids. Have a fabulous day. Wear a mask. Do all the things and I'll chat to you soon.